I want to share with you how to reach your goals. I think the Bible's greatest motivational book ever been written. Now I want you to repeat after me, please. We got to recondition our minds first. Let us say together, good things are supposed to happen to me. Yeah, write that down. I want you to say that to yourself every day. See, we live in a world where we believe that bad things are supposed to happen to us. I remember at a point in my life, Bishop, when things are going good for me, and I said, this is too good to be true. Something is bound to happen. Guess what? It did. Thou shalt decree a thing that shall be established unto you and shall accomplish that where unto it has been sent. Watch your words. Watch what you say about yourself, about your affairs. Be conscious of that on a daily basis. Why? Because your words are powerful. In the beginning was the word. Life and death is in the tongue. Watch what you say. Never say I'm broke. Say I'm overcoming a cash flow problem. <laughs> Claim what you want, not what you don't want. So affirm good things are supposed to happen to me and begin to believe that. Begin to expect that. Now, I was talking to my oldest son, Calvin. We were going for a walk. And I said, Calvin, do you want to be successful? He said, yes, sir, Dad. I said, okay. He kept on walking. Then I stopped and I looked him in the eyes. It's my namesake, my junior. I said, Calvin, we're looking at each other eye to eye now. Do you expect to be successful? Given the fact that you are a single parent of two kids, given the fact that you decided not to go to college to further your education, given the fact that you're very talented, but you're behind on your dreams and your bills, do you expect, based upon your performance, based upon what you produce at this point in time in your life, do you expect to be successful? And Calvin got quiet. Because see, if you ask most people at the Manpower Conference, do you want to be successful? Do you want to live a life of productivity? Do you want to live a life of contribution? Do you want to be a better father? Do you want to have your own business? Are there dreams you want? Everybody will say yes. But see, want shows up in conversation. Expectation shows up in behavior. See, I can tell what you expect by what you do. That's why the Bible says, judge a tree by the fruit it bears. Not the fruit that it wants. Not the fruit that it talks about. Not the fruit that it claims. But by what you are doing. See, what you do when you leave here. When the music stops. When the shouting dies down. Your behavior. How you conduct yourself. Writing your goals down. Deciding to enroll in school to get a GED. Deciding to sit in the class with children young enough to be your grandchildren. Decide to find some product, some idea, some service that you can provide so that you can begin to create some value for yourself so you can create wealth. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important that we begin to learn how to create wealth. I'm not talking about loving money. See, I believe the lack of money is the root of all evil. People are steal for money. People are killed for money. People go to jail for money. Every time the unemployment goes up, in those areas where the unemployment is high, that's where you have the highest incidence of crime and violence. Whenever the unemployment goes up 1% in our community, 10,000 children and women are battered. One money makes a difference in your life. I never wanted to be rich. All I've ever wanted to do was to be comfortable. How many have ever wanted to be comfortable? Raise your hands. Then I realized in order to be comfortable, you gotta be rich. An old friend of mine, Zig Ziglar, said, people say money won't make you happy, but everybody want to find out for themselves. <laughs> Rita Davenport said, money ain't important, but it's right up there with oxygen. And let me tell you something, fellas, even if you're as homeless as I am, if you got some money, women will find something cute on you. <laughs> He got earlobed like Denzel, honey. <laughs> Money makes a difference. I used to be so broke when creditors would call the house, my children would answer the phone and say, my daddy say he ain't home. <laughs> I was so broke at one time in my life, I walked by a bank and tripped the alarm. <laughs> I tell you, poverty sucks, you hear me? <laughs> Repeat after me, please. I'll never be broke again. Yes, write that down. I affirm that I'll never be broke again. Never. 
never will I ever be broke again. Let me tell you what money does. Number one, it gives you control over your life. Write that down. Number two, it gives you options. Three, it allows you to live a life of contribution, to contribute to things that you feel strongly about. Like this ministry and the work of Project 2000 will be doing to change the lives of young people. Bishop Jake's vision is if we can have Little League football teams and baseball teams and basketball teams, then we can have Little League dermatologists and cardiologists and endocrinologists. So he is now establishing an institution, Project 2000, to give our young people the methods and the techniques to reinvent themselves as we go into the next millennium. And this era that Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. So here's the first step to accumulating wealth. If you expect to do it, write this down. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. That's why the Book of Life said the road to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What are the things that others won't do? Number one, make discipline a major force in your life. How many of you know if you'd have been more disciplined, you'd be further along to reach your goals right now? Socrates said the undisciplined life is an insane life. The road to life is straight and narrow because few there be that are willing to discipline themselves. Here's something else that most people won't do. Make it okay to fail. A lot of people, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. Repeat after me, please. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. Yeah, see, anything that's worth doing is worth doing right, as we have been taught, if you know how to do it. But if you don't know how to do it, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. Now write this down. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. The first time I stood up to speak, I stood up and my mind sat down. I looked at the audience and I panicked. I had to introduce a play at school. Uh, we're about to, we're about to start off. <sighs> Ran up, Mr. Washington, Mr. Brown, where are you going? Uh, Mr. Washington, I, I can't think, sir. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Did you rehearse? Yes, sir, I did. Well, what's wrong? Why did you say your lines? I, 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 don't, I don't know, sir. I just I got up there and I looked at him and everything left me. Let me do it another day, please, sir. No, go back out there, Mr. Brown. Mr. Washington, I'll mess up, please, sir. Don't, 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 don't send me out there now. I'll mess up. Mr. Brown, if you run now, you will always be running. Anything that's worth doing, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. Why are you moving like that? I got to go to the bathroom, sir. Mr. Brown, go back out there. Yes, sir. We have uh, a start a plea called 12 Angry Men, directed by Mr. Leroy Washington. And I ran off. The next day, hey, I fell far. Hey, Les Brown, how are you? They dogged me out. They talked about me so bad. The next time another event came up, Mr. Washington, Mr. Brown, you were up. I said, no, Mr. Washington. Everybody says, no, not him. I said, they're right, Mr. Washington, not me. He said, Mr. Brown, you are up. Yes, sir. And I went out and pretty soon when people laughed at me, it didn't bother me. They would throw paper and I could catch it without losing my concentration. And then one day I came out and a hush went across the audience because it must have been something about me that indicated that I had come to myself and Mr. Washington had been practicing with me to give a presentation and I looked at the audience and I said I choose not to be a common man 
It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. Girls still say, that's my boyfriend, honey. I like me some less brown, baby. <laughs> but I didn't start off like that. You have something special. You have talents and abilities in you that you don't even know. So how do we begin to create wealth? Let me give you some, some ideas. Number one, write this down, knowledge. What knowledge that you have in this economy, part of what we need, that people are willing to pay you for that. Next is talent. What talent? Dion's talent is playing football. I didn't have that as a talent. My talent is talking. To me, my definition of success is doing what you love to do and find somebody to pay you to do it. You want to master your talent. Find out what it is that you love to do. I love to talk. Scripture is another key that says to us of what we need to do to begin to develop ourselves. Luke 12, 34, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what do you love to do? And then explore ways in which you can earn a living doing that. Cooking, writing, painting, working with numbers, working with people. The other thing is not only must you have knowledge, talent, some skill, but the other thing that's important, faith to act on whatever your dream is. See, if you don't believe in yourself, how many people you know that have a lot of talent, a lot of abilities, but they don't believe in themselves? Raise your hands. See, that faith is very important. So the faith to act on those dreams, those desires. Here's scripture that I, that I like very much. Proverbs 16, 16th chapter, third verse. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit means to carry into action deliberately. Commit means to make it happen no matter what. Commitment, the difference between next time you have bacon and eggs, the chicken was involved, the pig was committed. He had to give it all up. That's gonna take a minute to sink in tonight, all right? See, when you make a commitment, I'm gonna become wealthy. When you make it important, when you decide I'm gonna do it no matter what, life changes for you. See, most people don't keep their commitments to their commitments. That's why they lead lives of poverty, lives of misery, lives of unhappiness. Socrates said the uncommitted life isn't worth living. So part of what you must do, whatever commitment, whatever covenant you make with God while you're here, to go back to be a better father, to go back to make a difference in the community, to go back to change your life, to decide not to ever to use drugs or alcohol again, to decide to bet that you're going to begin to recreate yourself, that you're going to be reborn to a new state of consciousness. Whatever commitment that you make, keep your commitment to your commitment. No matter what, if it's hard, then do it hard. But keep your commitment to your commitment.